What's up, guys? It is Monday, February 6th. It's 5.30 p.m., and this is the Crypto Newsletter. And starting off, we're going to start off with this because everybody loves a good conspiracy theory. I know I do. And that's something about me. I'm a sucker for conspiracy theories. I'm a sucker for just like kind of going the opposite way and just thinking about how the world doesn't it doesn't operate like it's told it's operated like right and i remember and i've been in this space for a very long time for too long let me tell you that too long but i think it was 2018 this picture just surfaced right there was all this talk all these riddles all these kind of ciphers these codes and through pictures being put out and this one really sent me down i think this was the picture that really had me plunge all in and like really like kind of start to go down this other side of things i mean i was always going down the deep dives the rabbit holes like that but as far as just like this whole different stage of just like coded messages symbols etc this was the picture that done it for me and i remember it coming out in 2018 before everything had unfolded and i was looking at it and you know then 2019 rolled around in 2020 with everything that had happened and it was just so crazy how a lot of these a lot of these things panned out and it was good to kind of come across this and see it again because a lot of these things are playing out as we speak and that you know seeing this had people look into bricks more look into bricks more national emergencies just the deep state and just like everything involved with Russia, China, uh, North Korea, South Korea, and Trump, and then XRP agreements. Like it was just very odd and bizarre. But you know, I like odd and bizarre, and I like not knowing the answer to things. And I'm I'm a pretty curious person. So if you're a curious person too, and you came across this back in the day, or you're just seeing this now, and you're like, well, I'm trying to go down this rabbit hole, leave a comment. Let me know. I'd love to hear that. But yeah, very interesting stuff as far as these ends go. And then we had another one came across as well too, Vincent Kennedy. I don't know much about the backstory of it, but looking back, 2020, March 17th. So I feel you. However, you have to admit something Nasara like seems more plausible as the days move on. Prediction 2023. Now we're in 2023 and it seems more plausible than ever before because I'm going to show you that Bank of America is prepping for a default. Default. So things are definitely panning out as a lot of these kind of accounts had narrated it, it was going to be. So estimate around 100 million people are awoke in some way, 7 billion people in the world. Those who know how to look see it all happening others have no idea and are actually living happy lives so true the, the less you know the happier you are because the more you know it's like you you know you're just so aware and so see through all the bullshit in a sense but others have no idea and are actually living happy lives things will get exposed in the many months ahead however the year 2023 is going to change for all and haven't we been saying 2023 is the year that decides the next decade I think so. And it seems like that's going to be the case. And that was in 2019, September 30th. Now we're sitting here about three years and three months later, and it's very well, much, very well much the case. So interesting stuff. And then this, Rothschilds aim for full control of bank that bears their name. So the family's investment vehicle said it would offer to buy out other shareholders in Rothschilds and co the flagship in the global banking dynasty. So they're preparing a bid to take the investment bank private. Hmm. So the Rothschilds family, which over decades built an international banking dynasty by advising sovereigns and corporate giants is preparing a new deal, taking its namesake company private. So very interesting stuff as far as that goes. And we all know kind of the the ties involved with that, how they own like majority of the central banks in the world and they're the richest family. So now let's go into this. So I'm going to need to find access into this article because this can be very interesting. A bipolar currency regime will replace the dollar's exorbitant privilege. So who shared this? It was Judy Shelton. So Judy Shelton had shared this on Twitter and she was like the uh, the Fed Fed chair or Fed governor nominee during Trump's era, right? And she had come out with this and she was said on tape saying, you know, going back to a gold standard and a cryptocurrency type way. And now you can see this. So a bipolar currency regime will replace the dollar's exorbitant privilege. It's by Nor Noriel Rubini a day ago. So the writer's professor 
Professor Emeritus at the Stern School of Business, New York University, Chief Economist at Atlas Capital Team. The U.S. dollar has been the predominant global reserve currency since the design of the Bretton Woods system after the Second World War. Guys, in our course videos on Stargate-Ventures.com, this is why we taught all these things. Because you can't understand the opportunity of crypto and just the opportunity that we're all living in as far as the fundamental kind of reshaping that it's doing to the entire world. You can't understand that until you know where we've been. So let me pull it up. So that's why on our website here, stargate-measures.com, we recorded over 300 plus educational videos on the fundamental side of crypto and just um, what's going on in the world, as well as the technical and the trading side of it. So if you click here on education and software, you can see the amount of course programs we have. And what I want you to do if you're interested in learning more about and getting free access to some education here, click on that education and software there and request access to this opportunity of crypto accelerator course. It's absolutely free, but in there it has like 19 videos that are that will really catch you up to speed. And I'm telling you right now, you need to be caught up to speed if you not already are, because things are moving fast. I'm going to share some stuff at the end of this video that kind of makes the timeline accelerated as far as you need to get this under wraps and understand this to a T because time is tick, tick, ticking. That's for sure. And I'm going to show you things are heating up at the end of this video. And if you, and if you like what I'm sharing so far, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know, subscribe, hit the notification bell. But yeah, you're going to learn all that mission one, mission two, right in mission one, like smack dab right in the beginning, Bretton Woods system. Number three, we're learning about this stuff ahead of time so we can understand where we're headed. You got to learn the past and know where, and then identify where we're at in the future and where things could potentially lead to. That's what we're doing here at Stargate. And as you can see, that's what they're talking about too. Noriel Rubini, man, he, he's been on it. So even the move from fixed exchange rates in the early, let's read it. Ah, oh, man, they're, tr they're really trying to hold us back from this info, my man. Let's see how I can potentially get through this. So, hmm, I somehow can't, I can't get access to it. They're blocking us off. Um, I don't need another trial to kind of get on and then cancel, but you get the point. And this is on the Bahamas trade info. So the greenback is bound sooner or later to feel the effects of intensifying geopolitical rivalry between the US and China. And since we can't get in and learn kind of what they're saying here, I mean, we lay it all out in that accelerator course. So go to stargate-ventures.com. I'll put the link in the bio, go to education and software and request access to this free accelerator course. You got nothing to lose. It's free. And you're going to learn a whole lot in there. That's for sure. And you'll probably want more and some more learnings after um, learning about those things because that will open up your mind to a ton of other things. Gartha, we have over like three, no, a hundred plus course videos in there, all heat, all absolute heat. So, but first get, get that free course accelerator. No, no reason to pay now if you can get something for free, right? So get into there, but yeah, you can learn more about what's going on as far as this goes in there. Now we can go to this US dollar surge dampens crypto market momentum. That's why we look at the dollar charts. We look at the bond yields. We look at those key macroeconomic charts and those market dynamic charts because that will lead us to knowing what will happen with crypto, with stocks, et cetera. And yes, there's been a dollar surge. We've been kind of warning about it for the past week now and we got it. And crypto has held its own so far, but you know, there's definitely, we're hanging on the edge here. If the dollar rips up just even a little bit more, we could see those targets get hit to the downside that we've been laying out in our market update. So definitely wanna watch that if you haven't already. So that's why we watch it. Now let's go to this, Visa Eyes high value USDC settlement payments on Ethereum. The same way that we can convert between dollars and euros on a cross-border transaction, we should be able to convert between digital, digital tokenized dollars and traditional dollars, 100%. So we've been testing how to actually accept settlement payments from the issuers in USDC starting on, a, starting on Ethereum and paying out in USDC on Ethereum, right? Starting. So these are large value settlement payments. And... They're ultimately going to transition. I mean, you have XLM on Stellar. That's likely where I see them ultimately leaning towards once they realize and test on Ethereum and be like, all right, let's level this up. They're going to move to Stellar. Let's go to this. So we know this already. Hong Kong regulator wants to beef up its staff covering virtual assets. So Hong Kong Securities and Future Commission wants to expand its team to deal with licensing applications for the incoming virtual asset service provider regime. Yeah, so they have laid out their groundwork for um, digital asset kind of clarity and a framework for um, these companies to apply for licensing. So must apply for a license before March 1st. 
and enjoy a transitional period of 12 months. Interesting. All right. And it lines up with the timeline. So UK looks to launch digital pound by 2030 roadmap to be released soon. It's definitely going to be before 2030. Let me tell you that. They probably already got it set up, ready to go. But um, yeah, so officials believe 2025 is the earliest the Bank of England can start building and testing a prototype. I don't believe that to be the case. But yeah, that just they're coming more publicly out saying, hey, we're, we're thinking about doing this. And they're ultimately building it up on the back end to launch it. Then crypto exchange Binance to suspend US dollar bank transfers this week. Stuff is going on with this, man. I'm telling you, they're, they're catching the dog in the cage. There's something going on. You can see it. Um, it's been going on for months now. It's just like with FTX, just like with Luna. It's kind of like, all right, when's it, when's the ball going to drop? Same with Tether too. When's the ball going to drop? Sometimes they're not ready yet. There's got to be an opportune moment. And that moment could be now or could be in the future, but definitely wasn't the past couple months ago, even though everybody was calling for it. So it's kind of like, all right, let everybody get off guard and maybe something happens. So we'll keep our eyes on that. Now we got South Korean regulator provides guidance on security tokens. So digital assets that fit the descriptions for security tokens will be regulated under the country's Capital Markets Act. So if we go down here, the Financial Services Commission highlighted that digital assets that fit the characteristics laid out in the country's Capital Markets Act will be treated as securities. Let's see when this is happening. So January 19th. No. So yeah. So we're seeing that to be the case. More regulation, 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 regulation. Now we're seeing a lot of countries coming out with it, making the 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 way of the road clear. Now the U.S. needs to step up. But global global crypto industry pledges aid to Turkey following deadly earthquakes. So much stuff happened yesterday, the past 24, 48 hours. Just crazy. On like I think I saw a chart as far as the earthquakes that went off yesterday. There was like all over the world earthquakes. Weird stuff going on. That's for sure. But when I saw this, I was like, what a perfect kind of solution that Stellar created with Stellar Aid. I mean, the Turkey's looking for aid right now. They need to disperse aid to uh, the citizens there. And Stellar already has a product built up, ready to go. They already tested it with Ukraine. They can send a wide array of payments and aid very fast, distributed out to multiple wallets. I wouldn't be surprised if Stellar was included in that. No sign of it from here, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised that's the case. Now we go to this. Italy setting up crypto environment that meets EU's new laws, central bank governor says. Even though surveys show only about 2% of households own crypto, regulators are bracing for the EU's MICA rules for service providers. So they're getting all set up for that. UK financial regulator warns crypto firms of jail time for unauthorized ads. The rules aren't set in stone, but will mirror those for other high-risk investments. So they're trying to make it clear that of the the way of the road here which is all good you know as long as they're notifying people before you know taking that kind of regulatory action on them that's all good but not identifying making the the rules clear and then kind of saying hey you should have known not going to slide then we had this designing secure bridges for asset transfer out of quant had a good kind of article here talking about bridges talking about interoperability talking about large scale hacks and theft, talking about Ethereum, talking about Corda on Hyperledger Fabric and the interoperability and then bridge attack methods, just kind of basically walking through how it's going on right now. Cause there's been a lot of bridge attacks, but then Quant is uh, they lay out is leading the space in international standard development for asset transfer bridges. And they're the key contributor to the Internet Engineering Task Force Secure Asset Transfer Protocol to standardize digital asset transfers from one network to another. I like it. Quant's definitely a long-term hold. And then Jim Cramer says, market already decided Federal Reserve will create a recession no matter what. Hmm. Maybe they won't then because he's always wrong. So if he's coming out now saying, oh, they're going to cause a recession, they're going to cause a recession. Maybe I think we're going to see a hyper boom. But if he's like, oh, we're going to hyper boom. I'm like, oh, shit, we're going to have a recession. So that's a good sign. Institutional demand for Bitcoin denominated the entire digital asset industry last week. Nearly 100% of all investments again. So flows, flows right there. Yep, a lot of Bitcoin. Now let's go to this. We have another week of inflows into crypto. We're at quarter billion of dollars of inflows one month into 2023. Sentiment is optimistic. Guess we're buying risk again. And that's what it seems like. And that's been the case since January 1st rolled around. Ripple, a foundation for payments, FIS Global. This reminds me, I found so many 
kind of like uh, resource PDF things, reports like this from so many big companies last night that I'll lay out in the Discord. So if you're not already in the Discord, join it. I'll put the link in the bio. I'll share it in there as far as the PDFs that I found. I don't think I've seen anybody else share them. I think they're all relatively brand new as of 2023, but literally spelling out our future here. So I'm excited to show you guys those. I found a ton, just like effortlessly. I was kind of doing two things at once and I was just scrolling. It's what I found is it's to find info on undercover like ports like this is very easy. It's just a matter of how and what you type into Google. Looking up or typing in like phrases that people wouldn't necessarily think of, you come across kind of gems. So I'm going to share you guys those in the Discord. So if you're not already in the Discord, link will be in the bio. Come join it. And ask for those. It's all about like payments and banking and just events that are happening this year and the trends for 2023 from Accenture. I think Deloitte as well, too. Other big names. Very interesting stuff that they lay out and they call out Ripple and Stellar in them. So a foundation for payments. We have all this. International payment, SWIFT, correspondent banking, Ripple, Visa B2B, right there. It's laid up. Love to see it. Now we have this Ripple and Stellar. This is, um, not sure who this is from or the PDF is from, but as you can see, it's more likely that they will accept money transfers that have been enabled via blockchains. For example, the Ripple, Ripple or Stellar networks that have fixed value in terms of fiat currencies. Interesting. Hmm. We're going to have to dig more into that and see who this is from. So UNS doc, huh? Interesting. I'm going to have to do, that's a separate deep dive for sure, but very, very good stuff. Now we got this great to see R3's Willie Lim spreading the word at the 36 Asian bond market forum meeting hosted by the Asian development bank. That's Asian development bank is definitely one to keep on the radar as far as big moves they're going to make as always Willie's presentation. Okay. So let's click this. Application of DLT in financial market infrastructure and impact to ecosystem payments and settlement functions. I'm sure there's some gold nuggets there. Maybe I can find that kind of form and and that presentation. Citibank website. Swift plans to migrate their uh, begins their migration March 20th, 2023. So we're coming up to that. We're about like 30, 40 days and uh, beginning their migration until and then it'll keep going until like 2025 then it will solely be the standard so there is this transition period but the big bang and kind of the start of all this whole thing happens next month and there's a lot of things i'm going to show you at the end of this video that could coincide with a problem reaction solution for this all to be implemented i can't believe it's finally happening I'm waiting years 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 for this so final January 2023 ISO, they have current levels of ISO, current adoption over the SWIFT network quarter two to quarter three, 2022 or share below. So it kind of went over it. It was a survey, I guess. So let's keep going. Australia will introduce Bitcoin and crypto regulation this year, starting with asset custody and operating licenses. We're seeing all these countries now come out and get them ready to go. They're ready to rattle. That's for sure. Australia Treasury starts cryptocurrency regulation consultation, token mapping exercises underway. The government has started the regulation of crypto. And yes, Hedera is being looked at in detail. Interesting. Including well-known DLTs such as blockchains. If we go down here, it says directed acrylic graphs, Hedera and Phantom. Nice. So we're seeing all that take place. Now we see Europe. So European Central Bank. Digitalization is changing the way we pay. The ECP blog explores the findings of our surveys into how people in the euro area prefer to pay and considers what this means for the future of cash and digital payments. Cash or cashless, how people pay. I'm not going to dive into all that article, but as you can see, the narrative is building up. It has been for a while now. Volante Technology is a FedNow service provider. Keep in mind, FedNow is launching the first half of this year. I'm still making that summer of 2023 events document. If you want that, Come join the Discord. Ask for it. It will put some fire under my butt to get that fully finished. I'm almost done, but so many things to do. But if I get a lot of people joining that Discord or leaving a comment saying, dude, finish that 2023 summary of events, we need to be updated on it. I'll surely finish that by the end of this week. So let me know in the comments. Leave a like as well, too. Volante. So we got next month, 323-23. So 323-23. We will have legal clarification on XRP by then. 
interesting times ahead on the FedNow service, what to expect from the first version. And then if we go here, US FedNow instant payments and the end processing, it will launch in 2023. And we've seen, I mean, we did a video on it when this announcement was first kind of made that Volante is the technology partner, that the XRP connections within it, their Twitter account, Volante said, hey, yeah, we utilize XRP. So the writing's on the wall there, but CEO of Bank of America says they are preparing for a possible U.S. debt default. The second largest bank in the U.S., Bank of America, the circus is coming to town. Very interesting. But that goes back to what I was saying over here about how they said since, I think it was since Bretton Woods they were talking about. Yeah, I can't find it right now, but that's what we we're talking about as far as all that goes. So yeah, very interesting stuff right there. It's definitely a ticking time bomb. And what I wanted to warn about and what I'm going to make another follow-up video for the people in the Discord for is a D-Day plan, a D-Day plan, because I'm starting to see some signs of a potential black swan. And uh, before I go deep into that, let me cover this. Bank of France updated migration schedule. It's go live March 20th, 2023. It's right there. So we're, we're right at that moment, which leads me to believe that there's got to be a distraction. We're already seeing some signs come out. Italy warns hackers targeting known severe server vulnerability. So Italy got hit. Thousands of, thousands of computer servers have been targeted by a global ransomware hacking attack called VMware. Italy's National Cybersecurity Agency said on th Sunday, warning organizations to take action to protect their system. So remember as well, too, C-19 started in... Italy, and then it spread to the rest of the world. And just like the World Economic Forum has been saying cyber, been doing the cyber polygon exercises, and, and then Klaus Schwab saying the real risk is a global kind of cyber attack or a global cyber pandemic. This is all looking too eerily similar to what happened around four years ago, three years ago at this point. So um, definitely on my radar and paired along with the spy balloon and everything like that. I formed the thesis of what could play out. And yeah, so we saw this with Italy. So CISA is working with our public and private sector partners to assess the impacts of these reported inc incidents and providing assistance where needed, the U.S. said. So we see that. Italy's internet restored after nationwide outage. Reports of global ransomware attack. Could be over. Could not be, though. We still got a plan. So I'm going to make that D-Day plan, the worst case scenario for us to get situated here. So North Korean balloon flew into South Korean airspace, but didn't pose a threat. Then we also saw high altitude surveillance balloons have also been spotted in Japan, India, Philippines, and in the US as well too. Like, come on, something's going on here. <laughs> Not good. Ransomware hacking campaign targets Europe and North America, Italy warns, right? France, Finland, and Italy are the most affected countries in Europe, while the US and Canada have also had a high number of targets. So they're warning Europe and North America as well, too, to like be on alert for this. This could be a global kind of thing. And you want to do this and take action to avoid being locked out of your systems. Now, if we go to this, FTX being advised by cybersecurity firm Cigna on hack inquiries. So we're seeing all this talk about cybersecurity, hacks, ransomware attacks, this, that, and the other thing, internet outages. So there's a narrative being built for sure. That's what I would say. That's what I would say. And for a very long time, even back when I first saw this in 2018, there's always been talk and rumor of how the great transition of switching from the current traditional financial system we're on to the future financial system that we're going to be on, there needs to be an outage, so a reset, and then you flip everything back on and boom, new system, new asset valuations, etc. So with March kind of on its way with the big ISO kind of switch over and everything else lining up, so many pilot projects, Project Cedar wrapping up in March. We have so many other things wrapping up in March. I'm on very high alert from now until April 1st, that's for sure, for sure. So I would be as well too. And if you want to get that D-Day video and that game plan, come join the Discord. Let me know you want it. I'll make it. Plus the summary of events 2023. We're going to be releasing that video later today or tomorrow. So now we got this cyber attack about to happen, Black Swan. So now people are starting to kind of see it as well, too, what I'm seeing. U.S. Cybersecurity Agency says it's assessing impacts of reported global sorry, reported cybersecurity incidents after Italy sounded an alarm on global computer hacking attack. Not good. Not good. Then a little bit of a, some hopium right here because it's not hopium and it's definitely something that could play out. It could play out. You're seeing that 
on top of everything I just shared, in March, this wedge kind of that we've been forming for a very long time comes to a close. And usually when you see it, a very big high time frame wedge kind of come very, very close and tight, this is the type of movement you see. That's the type of movement you see. And there's so many positive catalysts that could come out, especially specific to XRP, that could see something like this. 100 percent then you see this trend line resistance resistance support support we have this coming down we're coming into this pinnacle and this triangle just like we did back here in this kind of long dragged out sideways phase everything's lining up for something big to happen and i'm sure it's going to be positive but we need to protect ourselves and we need to end up on the other side of it so definitely you want to get up to speed so go to stargate-ventures.com get your accelerator course it's free Start learning now imminently and then subscribe, hit the notification bell, get updated for any future videos that we're going to put out. I mean, we put out a lot of day and we're going to lay out like some game plans as far as any of these potential scenarios playing out as well as join the discord too, because I'm more communicative and active immediately on discord than obviously doing a video and posting on YouTube. So if you want immediate updates, go to the discord, say what up. And that's it for this video. A lot of big things going on interesting times and fun times for sure. But first we need to make it to the other side so we can all be celebrating in Thailand on the beach. I want to see y'all there. I know I'll be there. I want to see you guys there. So I'll see you guys in the discord and in the next video. I'll see you over there.